Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Asebi, and today we are going to talk about UltraFICO and pretty much everything you need to know about it. So the too long didn't watch if you want a one minute summary is that it's basically a secondary recon call in terms of applications. So the idea being that you apply for a card, if you get rejected, you call the reconsideration line and hopefully they're able to approve you at that point. You might kind of do the hang up and call again game a few times. If that doesn't work, the idea is that you can afterwards go to that ultra FICO score. To me, I think this is a good thing mostly because it's optional, meaning that you don't have to activate it if you don't want to. Think of it kind of like a trap card or some other instrument that is an option that is not mandatory. If it is something that's mandatory, obviously that kind of changes things up, but until that point happens, until it ever happens, I don't think we really need to worry about it. So what is the Ultra FICO score? What do they look at? What do they care about? The main three things they're looking at is that you have a balance in your accounts, that you are using the accounts, and also that you have not overdrawn the accounts. And so they're kind of looking at the last three months and they want to see about 400 or a few hundred dollars in that accounts. For most people who are working professionals, this is going to be relatively easy just because I feel like the bar is relatively low. A few hundred dollars in the accounts, again, pretty reasonable for the most part and not overdrawing, I don't think that's something you should do anyways because paying something like $35 is ridiculous. And the other thing is the transactions. So if you are someone who doesn't have cards, you're probably using your debit card, so it makes a lot of sense. The hard thing though is that, and we'll kind of see how this affects normal people and people like us, is if you have cards, you're probably not using your debit card for transactions. The reason why all of this is interesting is because FICO mentions that there's 7 million applicants who have low scores due to having thin borrowing histories. There's also about 26 million subprime borrowers who will have a higher score due to this. So 7 million people and 26 million people who can benefit because they have the money in their account and they're showing good history. For me, I think that's a pretty good thing and it just makes a lot of sense. For the most part, I think this isn't really going to impact us for our purposes just because I feel like we're kind of beyond that and again, most people watching my channel who are trying to take advantage of these perks and these benefits probably are already very well established in terms of their credit score. To me, this ends up helping three groups of people. So people who are recent graduates of college, people who have hated credit scores or maybe were taught that credit's evil and whatever else and now they're like, oh, I'm 40 and I want to start looking into this. This sounds really cool. And then the final group is internationals who might have the money in their account already, but who don't have that score established. So normally for all of these groups, the starting point is to get a secured card, a student card, or maybe a starter card from something like Discover if they can get approved for an unsecured card. The interesting thing about the Ultra FICO score is that it might allow people to skip that initial step in order to get just another card beforehand. So maybe even a chase card or something else that typically they want you to have about 12 months of history for. In the future, that might still continue because we don't really know what Chase's underwriting is, and obviously it can change pretty readily, but the idea is that they might be able to skip that and kind of change their own algorithm. One thing I've kind of hated about credit scores is that it really punishes you for mistakes, even small ones. And again, I'm someone who is relatively on top of stuff. This hasn't really affected me, but I do realize that it affects some other people. I've met some people who have high paying jobs and again, good incomes, high balances in their bank accounts, but they end up having a score that they're fixing due to prior mistakes. One interesting component is that you can choose which accounts that you allow them to see for the Ultra FICO score, so you don't even need to show them your highest balance one if that's something that you're worried about. Obviously, it might be manipulated by some savvy people, but I feel like they probably have a way to kind of weed it out. So if you're someone who has really high utilizations, let's say you did a bunch of balance transfers and your intent was to run away, even if you ended up having high balances on that account, if your score was that low, if you were defaulting, you probably still wouldn't be accepted for cards. Overall, I think this addition is fine. I do know some people who are very concerned about privacy, but again, I see it kind of as like a trap card that you don't have to activate unless it makes sense for you. And even if it did make sense, you don't have to activate it. It's your choice. If you want more information about this, I'd recommend reading the Wall Street Journal article. We'll also have a blog post down below that summarizes some of the numbers, just because that might be a bit more interesting for you, just because it's interesting for me. I recommend Googling the Wall Street Journal article just because it is pay gated. So if I link to it, you're only going to see one paragraph. 
There's also ways around this, but I don't want to get in trouble. So yeah, just Google it and you'll find your way. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this ultra FICO score? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it might be risky in the future if they kind of change when and where we might want to use it and stuff? Or do you think it's fun? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.